It's fun. Today, we're going to be talking about connecting QuickBooks online to your bank and effectively using the bank feed features. That's exciting. That's a long one. And it's going to be good, though. My name is Aretha Simons. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the webinar producer here. I'm going to show you how you can engage. Um, somebody's already turned on the closed caption. Just go to your bottom of your screen and click on the closed caption if you need that. We're going to send you the slides and the video replay. I think everybody here knows the drill. But one thing I would love for you to do is fill out the survey. It takes you two minutes, just two quick questions that will pop up when you leave the Zoom. We want to know what other webinars you want to hear about. I'm going to turn this over to Greg Boston, who is going to serenade you for the rest of the day about QuickBooks. Have a good one, Greg. All right. Thank you, Aretha. Welcome, everybody. Want to make sure you guys can hear me. Uh, can everyone hear me? Got the fancy microphone. Put it in the chat. Remember, that's how I told you. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, and then I assume you can see me and you can see the screen. Okay. We're going to spend most of our time in QuickBooks. Um, and by the way, um, we're looking at QuickBooks Online, um, so we will be in QuickBooks Online showing you how to do the bank feeds in QuickBooks Online. Okay, everybody seems to be good with that. Um, so what else do I want to say to you? Let's go back here. Um, so if you haven't seen me teach before, hi, I'm Greg, uh, and I'm a CPA specializing in nonprofit organizations. I have an accounting firm here in Atlanta. Um, we do 990s, we do audits, we do bookkeeping, and then I also own QuickBooks Made Easy. And QuickBooks Made Easy is um, a company that does nothing but teach people uh, how to use QuickBooks, but only if you're nonprofits. And we have courses, uh, we have webinars, uh, we have technical support, we have nonprofit consulting. We do have a three-day webinar series it's two and a half hours a day for three days that's coming up next month in november and for the online edition it's happening the 19th the 20th and the 21st if there's anybody here that's in the desktop it's happening the 12th the 13th and the 14th it's two and a half hours a day for three days it's only 2.99 to come for all three days two and a half hours but we're going to give you a discount um, i'll give you that coupon code uh in a minute and I think that's it. This is the coupon code to get off on the three-day webinar series, TS40OFF. We only do this twice a year. This teaches you everything you could ever know about QuickBooks if you are a nonprofit organization. And we will send you these recordings as well. Uh, you have them for the rest of your life. But anyway, so uh, today's agenda, we're going to look at how to connect your QuickBooks to your bank. All right. And then we're going to look at how to download and point the transactions. Uh, and basically, that's what we're going to do. This is a free webinar. We have an hour. I think that's right. Somebody put it in the chat. Is this supposed to be an hour? I never know. Yeah, it's an hour. Okay. So um, we will take breaks. No, it's only an hour. We probably won't take a break. Um, but we will take breaks for questions. Okay. So now, my team, let me give you my picture here of the team here. I forgot to do this. Okay. So... We have um, five people on the team. We're all accountants except for Bill. Bill is the marketing person, but all the rest of us, I'm an accountant, Paige's accountant, Questions accountant, Barbara's accountant, and all we do is teach nonprofits and our whole, we all have accounting firms and all we do is have nonprofit clients. Paige is on the line with us. She's kind of the head person um, that handles everything. Uh, and so Paige, if you want to come and say hello to everybody, just so they can hear your voice. Hello, everybody. All right. Okay, cool. Will this apply to PayPal transactions? Uh, I can show you how to connect PayPal, but Saul, I will tell you, um, it's a little bit of a messy situation. It's different from the normal connecting to a traditional bank. So if we have time at the end, I'll do it. But I will tell you, Saul, it is a little bit different because uh, what PayPal does is they create little mini sales receipts. And we're not really going to cover that here in this hour free webinar. We don't have time for that. All right. So uh, now let's see what we're going to do here. All right. I think I'm done. Uh, if anybody feels like your screen is too small and you have trouble seeing this webinar, you can scroll around until this little view thing pops up and then you click it and then you click full screen right there and then bloop, your screen will get nice and big. All right. Um, so you can see everything. So I think that's it there. 
Um, and then I do have a little poll question that I'm going to stop and ask you guys if I can find where it is. Uh, here it is. All right. Where are my polls? Uh, da, 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 da. Here's the polls. Um, got it? Or you want me to launch it? No, I got it. I got it. All right. So I kind of want to know who's using the bank feeds now, the downloading now, and are you familiar with it? So what's your level of expertise with downloading transactions from the bank into QuickBooks? Uh, never done it before. I've set it up, but I'm not using it. I've been using it a bit and have messed things up royally. I use it well, but have some questions. I know it well, but I'm hoping for some tips. So we've got uh, 95 people in the room. Yeah, I figured there'd be around 100. We've got about 60% that have answered. So we are waiting for people to answer. Now, for some reason, you don't see a poll, then just put something in the chat. Uh, if you don't see a poll, it's probably uh, because uh, we are going to look at credit cards. Uh, yes, we're going to look at credit cards as well, Mary Ellen. Oh, hey, Mary Ellen, how you doing? Uh, pocket Opera's never done it before. That's kind of cute. 75, 76 out of 95 people. That's 80% of the people, which means there's like 18 people that still have not responded. Um, Thomas Dalton says chat. I don't know why. Um, are we able to import square transactions? So Rhonda, that is not the bank. That's a merchant. Um, and they have a feature where you can download an app and import uh um, square transactions, but that's a whole nother, they do sales receipts too, like PayPal. So any kind of merchant downloading, we're not covering here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and we'll show you the results here. So over half of the people in this webinar have never done this before. Okay. And then 10 more, 12%. So that's like 65% of you have never really used this. Okay. Uh, nine of you have screwed it up and then there are another 21 that have been using it and have questions. Okay. That's probably the ones that are asking you these questions here. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to connect to a bank for a bank account, a savings account, and then also for a credit card account. Okay. Um, and then if we have time at the end, we can talk about PayPal and square. All right. So without any further ado, I'm going to start. Um, except I just want to make sure that y'all are ready for me to start. So somebody tell me if you are ready. Is anyone, is everyone ready? Uh, it can be done with the desktop version. I'll try and show that at the end. The desktop version of doing it kind of sucks, uh, to be honest with you. And it ends up costing money unless you want to do it manually. Um, and QuickBooks desktop is going bye-bye anyway. So um, I will see if I can teach it at the end, but I'm going to have to open up a QuickBooks desktop to show you how to do it. But yes, you can do it in QuickBooks desktop. But why are you in QuickBooks desktop? You need to be in QuickBooks online at this point. All right. So let's move on. Um, all right. So the first thing that I want to say is people get afraid of this. They're afraid to connect their bank to Quickity Books because they're afraid that it's going to send transactions directly into QuickBooks and it's going to immediately... Um, just because you're a startup nonprofit, Julia, does not mean that you should be in QuickBooks Desktop. You need to be in the online edition. It's only $170 for the advanced version from TechSoup, and it's $170 a year. Yes, Tracy, you'll get a copy of the video in the slides. All right. So people get afraid of connecting QuickBooks and your bank because they're afraid the, they're afraid the bank's going to send stuff, send stuff directly into QuickBooks. But that is not what's happening. What it's doing instead is the bank is sending the transactions not directly into your financial statements, but it's sending it to basically a holding tank, a waiting room. And from the waiting room, you either add them to your QuickBooks file, or if the transaction's already in QuickBooks, then you match that downloaded transaction to a transaction that's already in QuickBooks, and then it won't double dip it. Okay. So basically the way that, um, this downloading thing works is once you get this connected every day, you don't have to tell it to do it every day. It downloads transactions into this waiting room. And then from there, you either add it or match it in to QuickBooks. So that's why you can conceivably, um, you could conceivably connect this 
download a bunch of transactions, and then you can say, you know what, I'm not going to use this and turn it right back off. It's not a big deal. So do not be afraid to at least connect your bank and see how it looks. All right. So um, that's the first thing uh, that I'm going to do. So let me see what the next slide is. Um, okay. So let's go into QuickBooks and let's do this. So I'm going to go into a QuickBooks file. Here we go. So here's a QuickBooks file. Now, in order to do this, you will need to have access to your um, bank account, credit card account online. So in other words, if your bank is at Wells Fargo, you need to have the username and password to get into the Wells Fargo account because it's not going to be taking transactions off some back end that you don't know about. It's going from the website that you usually go to when you're looking at your bank transactions. So if you ask your boss and they say, I don't want you to have access to the Wells Fargo or Bank of America, so I'm not going to give you the username and password. Well, then why the heck are you doing their bookkeeping for them if they don't trust you? But anyway, you need it in order to be able to make this work, okay? So what I'm going to do, there's a number of ways to connect a bank, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this transactions window right here. It's under, it's in the black bar. And remember, you're going to get a recording of this video. So not if you're sitting there frantically writing down transactions, you don't need to do that. You're going to get the video. So then I'm going to click bank transactions right there. And then you see this thing that says link account. Now, if this link account will appear as a green button, if you've not linked any accounts before, and it'll be in the center of the screen, I've already connected this account. So I'm going to click link account to connect another account. So I'm going to click it. Now, what it's going to do now is it's going to know what bank or uh, what bank your either bank account or credit card account is connected to. Because if it's a credit card account, then if it's a Visa or a MasterCard, it's it's related to your bank. You know, maybe you have a Visa that's connected to your Wells Fargo account or something, okay? Now, if it's American Express or Discover, they act as their own bank. So when you go to American Express, you just type in American Express. I'm going to do that one. And before I go any further, though, just for fun, who has a weird bank at a small, because most banks will do this for you, almost all of them. Give me the name of some weird local bank, and let's see if it's in the list that QuickBooks has. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Give me some weird, Community Banks of Colorado, okay? Let's see if that's in here. Community Banks of Colorado. Look, there it is. How cool is that? Village Bank and Trust. I'll pick that one. There's Village Bank and Trust. Eagle Bank. Let's see if Eagle Bank is there. I love Austin, by the way. Is it called Eagle Bank of Austin, Texas? Yeah, I don't see Eagle Bank of Austin, Texas. But anyway, enough of that. So um, I'm doing bank. Uh, I'm doing Wells Fargo because that's my bank. So I'll click on that. So I'll click continue. And then it wants to know the username and the password. You see, it wants to know the username and the password for my bank. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click sign on. I'm moving this off the screen for a second. Okay. So then, and I don't know if your bank does this, but Wells Fargo wants to send a little text before it connects. So it's going to send a text to my little phone here. Here's the text. All right. Click continue. Let's see what it's showing me. Okay. So now it's showing me all of my bank accounts. I'm doing it this way because the bank accounts are actually have the balances in them and I don't want you to see them. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and I'm going to click continue. Okay. And then these are all my bank accounts. I'm going to agree to conditions. I'm going to click connect. And now it's establishing the connection. Okay. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So right now it's connecting to Wells Fargo. It's not downloading any transactions yet. It's just connecting to Wells Fargo. You only have to do this once. Once you're done, 
there it all is. I got a bunch of balances here, so I'm a little embarrassed again. But um, gosh, I got to show you one of them anyway. All right. What you do to connect is they want to know which account here, this is a list of my accounts with the bank, gets connected to which account in QuickBooks, okay, on your chart of accounts list. So in other words, I'll click on, um, let's see, it's American Express. So where's my American Express? Oh, I connected to Wells Fargo. I meant to connect to American Express. I screwed that up. Well, this is how you would do it if it was a bank account, okay? And then what you would do is you would click it and you would click savings, whatever the bank account is, and you would click connect. And then this is where you can choose how far back you want to enter, you want to download transactions for. I'll just do it from the beginning of the month. Once this initial connection is established and it downloads transactions, it's downloading transactions now. From now on, you don't have to do this. Every day, it'll download transactions from the last download is basically what it'll do, okay? And it's bringing in those transactions now, okay? Once the transactions are in, then it's in a waiting area. The waiting area is right here. This is not in QuickBooks financial statements. It's in a waiting area. Now I'm going to go ahead and link account again, and I'm going to do my American Express now because I really wanted to show you all a credit card. Uh, American Express, okay. And continue. And log in. And close. This is the card that I want to connect. I click authorize. Return to Intuit. So look at the, the windows look a little different depending upon what the bank is. Uh, so here's my uh, my account from the American Express card. And here's my chart of accounts list. Here's my credit card account. So I'll connect that. And now this is the other thing. How far back do I want to go? Now, let me explain something to you when it comes to the credit card. What some people do with their credit card which is definitely wrong, is they don't have a separate account for it in the chart of accounts list. They just enter it as a bill and then pay it. Is there anybody that does that? They don't have a separate card. They just enter one transaction when either they enter the bill or pay it and they break it out between, you know, for 50 or 60 different expense accounts. Does anybody do that? Let me show you. Some people are more visual. What I mean to say is what some people do is they don't have an account in the chart of accounts list for the credit card. Instead, what they do is when the bill comes in, either they enter a bill or they just wait until they pay it. And then when they pay it, then they're splitting it out between, you know, 50 million different charges. You know, their bank charges, a little bit of that, a little bit of it was contract labor, a little bit of that was that. Who does that? You do it as a journal entry, Kimberly. Okay. So stop doing that. Okay. Because when you do that, you're not entering the charges individually. You're lumping them. Um, and the timing is off because you're not entering the charges when they occurred. You're entering them when you paid it or when you got the bill. You got to put it to a liability account. You need to create an account for it in your chart of accounts list. Gear, chart of accounts. New, create an account. The type will be credit card. And then what that means is, say we're in the middle of a billing cycle, all right? So let's say your billing cycle drops on the 20th, and it's the 16th right now. Well, what you want to do is you want to download everything in the new billing cycle, okay? Um, go ahead and just finish out this billing cycle, and then download transactions starting with the next billing cycle is what I would do, okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and click this month. Now, remember, when it downloads the transactions, you can always delete them from the download. So the very first time you download, if there's some duplicated transactions that you know you already entered in there, you can either delete them from the download or if it'll let you match it, you can match them. So anyway, I'm going to click Connect. Anybody have any questions so far? 
It's weird. This is the first time you download. You kind of have to do it manually. And then ever after that, it just happens automatically. No one has any questions. Does anybody have any comments? Does anybody want to say anything to me at all? <laughs> Does anybody care what I'm talking about? Is anybody even there? Hello? <laughs> Hello. All right. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, Tracy says like the music selection. Okay, good. All right. Okay. I added the bank account. Now, how do I add a credit card account? I just showed you, dear. I just did it. Okay. So here's the credit card. There it is. Now, again, these transactions are not in QuickBooks. Okay. They're in, I mean, I know you're in the QuickBooks program, but this is the waiting room. Just to kind of show you what I mean. If I go to the chart of accounts list, and I go to the credit card account. Let's see where the credit card account is. There it is right there. You see how the balance is zero? And if I click on the register, it's going to show you all the transactions in your financial statements in QuickBooks, and there are none, okay? Except this opening balance, okay? This is the opening balance. What I would do with credit cards is it puts in an opening balance at least American Express does. You want to go into the register and delete this balance. Always. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add transactions starting with the new billing period. Okay. So I'm going to go to where the waiting room is. Uh, look for any credit card, Tracy. They may have an opening balance for any of them. Okay. All right. So, um, and I'm only not answering your question, Tisha, because it doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. And I don't want to confuse other people. All right. So the, this is in the waiting room. Now, let me, let me explain to you what people do that's wrong. Okay. Here's what people do that is wrong. What they'll do is they'll click. You see this add button here? They'll go, Ooh, that sounds good. And then they'll add it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click add. So now it should be in the register. So I don't see it in the register. Why is it not in the register? Somebody put it in the chat. Badger, hang out. We'll get there. Yeah, I have to refresh the window. Okay. The problem with that, this is what I have a problem with. If you do that, what it does is it creates this transaction, but you didn't check to see whether it went to the right category or not. You didn't point it to a grant. This is where you point transactions to grants, and you also didn't point it to a program. So I don't want you to do that, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to here where all of my transactions are, I'm going to go to categorized. And this gives me a list of the ones that I added from the bank download. And I'm going to click undo. And what this does is it takes it back out of QuickBooks and it puts it back in the waiting room. So now this is 78 instead of 77. If I go back to the register and refresh the screen, it's going to remove it. So that's one way of fixing problems. You can just go to the categorized section and click undo. Now there's nothing in the register again. Okay. So the wrong way is to just click add. That's wrong. Okay. The right way of doing it. And by the way, you see there's three different groupings here. There's ones that are for review. There's ones that you've already added. And then there's ones that exclude. Okay. So I'm going to click for review. And I'm going to pick this one. And I'm just going to click on it once anywhere in this row, and it's going to open up what's called the system tray, okay? So now what I can do is I can point it to the appropriate vendor, okay? So um, that would be Ready Fresh. I don't know what that is. I think I bought some. That's probably food. It sounds like food. So uh, I'm going to add that to my um, vendor list, Ready Fresh. Notice how it only downloaded a description it, and the date and the dollar amount. That's the only thing the bank knows. It doesn't know who the payee is, but based on the description, I can decide what the payee is, okay? And then it's certainly not office supplies, 
Okay. So I'll put it to what it really was. Okay. So, um, well, it was food. I bought lunch for myself. So I don't want anybody to know that. So I'll put it to miscellaneous. When in doubt, put it to miscellaneous. That's not true. Anyway, now, if it was, um, if you're using uh, the class feature to track program admin and fundraising, which you absolutely should be doing, this was for the guidance center. And then if it's to be paid for out of a grant, you should put the grant here. Now, if this is news to you that you use these two fields to track these things, you need to take my three-day training. But anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, right now, there's 78 transactions that need to be coded and added. I'm going to click Add. And now there's 77. Okay. So the it's you can think of this waiting room area like a toilet. Okay. And every day you go into QuickBooks and you flush the toilet, which means basically you get rid of all the new transactions that have appeared here. They're going to appear every single day. So no more do you have to wait around till you get a bill to figure out what people charge and you're checking people and you can't remember because it was a month ago if it was your own charge. Now you can keep up with this every single day. Okay. So I'm going to keep with the credit card. Now, one of the things that's cool about um, this downloading thing is that when it comes to credit cards and debit cards, a lot of times it's depending upon the vendor, it goes to the same place. Like Office Depot always goes to office supplies. So you can set up something called rules. You see, QuickBooks tries to guess what these things should be pointed to based on, you know, I, uh, AI history or whatever. But instead, you can create your own rules. So what I like to do, because there's a lot of these with the credit card to add, okay, a lot of these. So I'm going to go ahead and click. You see where it says description? If I click it, it'll sort it by description. And the reason why I like to do that is because now all the ones that are of the same name will pop up together. OK, like here's Delta Airlines. Look at all these tickets. I got four tickets here. OK, and look at um, Arden's Garden. I love going to Arden's Garden. OK, so there's a bunch here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a rule for Arden's Garden. So I'm going to go over to rules. And I'm going to go to rules and I'm going to create a rule, which you can change later on, called Arden's Garden. Now, that's just the name of the rule in a list. It's not what the rule is. But what I can say is anytime there is money out of any bank account that includes the description that contains Arden's Garden, please point it to make it, first of all, make it an expense type transaction. These are your choices for money going out, transfer, check, credit card payment or expense. Expenses, if it's a credit card charge or a debit card charge, um, select the category. Um, and I'll put this to um, Arden's Garden. I'll put this food to office supplies. <laughs> um, I don't need to put a product or service. Payee, Arden's Garden. Arden's Garden. And I know this takes a second to set the rule up, but it's going to save us time going forward. Um, and then assign more. Now I can assign a class to it. We'll say it's always for admin. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. Uh, oh, the rule contain the name can't have a, they do weird stuff with that. Can't have a comma in it. Okay. So now we've got our rule. So I'm going to go back to bank transactions and let's go to where Arden's Garden is. Well, it's not even here anymore. I'm glad I did this. The reason why it's already gone is because once it saw the rule, it automatically categorized it without even looking at it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like things to happen automatically from the rules. I still want to review them. So I'm going to undo all of these. I'm going to go back to the rule. And I'm going to edit the rule. You see this thing all the way at the bottom? Automatically confirm transaction the rules apply to. That means automatically add it to QuickBooks without you doing anything. I don't like that. So I'm going to undo this, click save. 
it will still apply the rule, but instead of adding it to QuickBooks, show you where how it appears. See, now there's, we're back to 77 again. It applied the rule. And I want you to see, like, if I look at this, uh, this particular one, I'll click on it. And I'll click, um, uh, there we go. Office supplies, administrative. Okay, so that's where it put it. But then if I go to a different one here, again, office supplies, administrative. Okay, so now I could click add on each one that says rules. I could check them all off like this and then click accept. That's the same thing as add. But if there's a way to see, to just cull this down. So instead of it showing all transactions, it only shows recognized. Now it just shows the seven. I check the box and click accept. And now it adds all of them. Now we're down to 70. So if I go back to the register for the credit card and I'll refresh it, now there should be eight transactions in there and what happens is these transactions keep increasing uh, the amount of money that is in the credit card liability account. All right. So now I'm going to go a little bit further here. I want to do one more rule because the rules are really, really cool. So I want to just kind of deep dive it here for a second. Um, I'm going to go back into the ones that are for review. And I'm just going to pick something else here. Um Go to the next screen here. Uh, okay, here's Sarah Bess. Has anyone ever been to Sarah Bess? It's a restaurant in New York City. They have like four or five of them. They're so good. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking all this guy does is eat. Lucius said it was pointing to the wrong account. Why? Because I pointed it to office supplies. That's where I wanted it to go to, Lucia. I made the rule. So I'm trying to hide it from my board. Anybody ever been to Sarah Bess? Is there anyone here from New York City? Is there anyone in the room from New York? Kim says no. Golly. All right. Anyway. Oh, well, Roberto, you've never been to um, Sarah Bess? You should go there for breakfast. It's really good. Anyway, Roberto says no in loud caps. Why? Roberto's mad at Sarah Bess. I don't know why. Anyway. Okay. So I'm going to go. I'm doing Sarah Beth. So I'm going to do a rule on Sarah Beth's. Okay. So um, Sarah Beth, I think I'm going to click on this once. Um, and then I think I'm just going to highlight Sarah Beth. And they have more than one. And each one of these will have a different memo. This one's in central New York. Then there's one on the Lower East Side, blah, blah, blah. So instead, I'm just going to make the rule anytime I see the word Sarah Beth. So I highlighted it by clicking control and the C or command and C, I guess, if you're in Macintosh land, I'm going to click on rules and then I'm going to add a new rule for Sarah Beth. And description. So if it contains Sarah Beth and I'm going to add, uh, let's see, assign it. Now what I'm going to do this time is a little different. You see where it says add a split. I'm going to click split and I'm going to say, I want, 25% of it to go to, uh, let's see, I know I'm eating again. I'll just put it to local travel. I should, I need to have a thing for meals and I don't, but y'all are smart. Y'all can understand the overall point here. I'll say 25% goes to the admin class. And then I'm going to say the rest of it, 70% of it, goes to 63.80. But it's going to go to the fundraising class. Okay. So, and then that'll happen anytime I go to Sarah Best, because I always know I'm taking donors and stuff to Sarah Best. This is where we would put the name of the payee. I'll go ahead and just control V and add that. Sarah Best, add it as a vendor. And, uh, then I click save. Uh, the percentage just must equal up to 100. Well, that was stupid. Thank you. There we go. Five. Somebody probably caught that already. All right. So now I'm going to go back to the bank transactions and I'll go to Sarah Bess. Actually, I can just go to 
recognized. It recognized four of them. Here's one that was recognized from a previous rule. So then I can just check all of these and click accept. And now we're just 66. So see, it's a little bit of a pain the first couple of three times. But once you get the rules down, it takes seconds to get these transactions in. Okay. So what happens since you're asking me about the credit card. So what will happen is I'll just pull up a balance sheet real quick so you can see what the balance sheet looks like. The balance sheet's the report that has all your assets and all of your liabilities. Balance sheet. And you'll see, where's the credit card? Here's the Amex card with the balance, 382.99. So what's beautiful about this is that you can now reconcile this credit card. As soon as the statement comes in, you will have already entered all the transactions, okay? So you can simply click on the gear, you can click reconcile. If you don't know how to reconcile, then you definitely need some more training from me. Um, 382.99, reconcile. So you have the statement with you and you put the ending balance uh, for the credit card. You pick the bank account or the credit card account you wanna reconcile, there it is. And 382.99 and the statement ending date will be We'll say the 18th or whatever. I'll click start reconciling. And what happens is if you use this download feature, then it pre-checks every transaction that came from a download or was matched. It pre-checks them in the bank feed so you're already reconciled. So you don't have to check back and forth anymore. It's already done. You just click finish now and you're done with the reconciliation. You can do... 12 reconciliations in three minutes, okay? Because you're basically reconciling every time you go into the bank feed and add or match the transactions. Does that make sense to y'all? You still have to do a formal reconciliation like I just did, but it'll just take seconds. Does that make sense to y'all? Hey, where are the red colored items on the screen? Oh, you mean what are the red colored items for the screen? Those red colored items are add-on add -on functions if you have something called right tool, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's an, it's an outside app, okay? All right. You don't have it. Don't worry about it. All right. So now that I've done this for a credit card account, now I want to do it for a bank account, okay? So I've already kind of set up a bank account, but I want to talk about how you would utilize this for a bank account. It's easy how you would use it for a credit card account because your charges come down. You don't enter them ahead of time. As the charges appear, you just add them and use the rules, okay? When it comes to a bank account, some of that stuff you've already entered. You should have already entered your checks, okay? Because you usually print them out of QuickBooks or... Um, if you make deposits, I encourage you to enter those manually first and then match those just like you match the bank, okay? But debit cards that are taken or drafts that are taken out of the checking account, those you can just add from the download. So I'm going to go to transactions, bank transactions. So what I'm telling you, I'm going to repeat myself. What I'm telling you is that this is like a toilet every day. The bank will give you all the transactions for each account for the previous day, and you are either to add them or match them, okay? You either add them if they're not already in QuickBooks, which will be the case for credit card transactions um, and debit card transactions and maybe even drafts. Or if it's a check or a deposit, I want you to enter those manually, so you're probably going to match those. OK, so let me show you how to match. OK, I'm going to go over to this checking account right here. We only have seven transactions that got downloaded. OK, and you can see this first one is a check. Well, a check has probably been entered because you probably printed out of QuickBooks. So look, the check, it found a match. It found a check and it matches by dollar amount and check number. It found a check that was written. On 926, a check 6654. This is in QuickBooks. See, these are this is a transaction in QuickBooks. 
And then it downloaded this check for 6654 that was the same amount. So it wants to know, do you want to match them? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to pull up this check. So I'm pull up the check here because I just want you to see. Um, let me do, I'm going to do a little search here. What was that check number? 6654, I think. Uh, there it is. Okay, so here's a check. We already wrote it down. We printed it. It's already in QuickBooks. And then two weeks later, it comes down on the bank feed. It recognizes that it's already in QuickBooks. And if I click match, it will not. Repeat, it will not add it over again. It won't duplicate it. It'll simply take it out of this download. We're at seven. I'm going to click match. And it's going to take it down to six. So it basically removes it from the download and it doesn't add it to QuickBooks. It matches it to this check that's already there. I know that it matched it because when I refresh the screen on a picture of the check, look at this. You see this here? One online banking match. Okay. And then I'll click it and there it is. Okay. So that's, again, because I matched it, now this check will automatically be checked off the next time I do a bank rec. So if you add from the bank feed or match from the bank feed, you won't have to check it off when you do the bank rec. It'll already be done. What do you all think about that? It makes doing bank recs wonderful. Give me some love here or some hate. What are you all thinking? It's really, really cool. It's really, really cool. Okay? So, all right. So um, let's go back to the transactions because, again, this is like a toilet. Every day you go in, you flush the toilet. So I'm going to go into bank transactions. Okay. Or maybe I already have them up here. I already have them up here. Okay. We'll do it there. All right. So um, this one is a draft. Okay. So this is the kind of thing where you add it directly from the bank feed. Again, we're going to click it open. We're going to pick AT&T telephone. That's good. I'm going to put it to the admin class. If it's paid for out of a grant, I'm going to put the name of the grant here. I'm going to click add. And now we go down to where there's five. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here is a line. This is a, a loan. It wants to point it to the line of credit account. That's actually correct. Okay. I can put the name of the vendor here. What was it? Wells Fargo. You see, the drafts, I add. The checks and the deposits, I match. Okay? The debits, the credits, and the drafts, I add. The deposits and the checks, I match. So here we are. Now, it found two of them. Okay? Now, I'm going to stop because, again, I, I may be skinning your ignorance here. But when it comes to income... When it comes to income, what some people do is they simply go to the plus new and they make a manual deposit and they enter deposits here. If that's where you enter deposits manually, it will match. Okay. You see how it found a deposit on 10 4 for 2700 that's in QuickBooks and it got downloaded on 10 4 for 2700. It's a match. So I'm going to click match. Now there's three left. Some people use the sales receipt feature. This is what you're supposed to use if you want to use QuickBooks as a donor, member, or student database. You're supposed to use the sales forms, and by that I mean invoice and sales receipt. So if anybody uses the sales receipt feature, here's the sales receipt. You're filling this out, okay? That also will match. So here's where a $1,200 transaction um, a sales receipt, and then there was a deposit of $1,200. It's the same day, so I'm going to click match. All right. Now, here's two more deposits. Now, sometimes a deposit contains more than one transaction, right? So if the deposit contains more than one transaction, how do you know which transactions are in the deposit so you know how to match them. Check this out. Now, not all banks do this, but the big ones do. You see here where there's a paper clip and it says three? Under this one, it says three on this one too. What do you think that means? Put it in the chat. Just guess. What do you think that means? Do 
there's more than one check, more than one check or or charge being deposited. Do you know it? If you click on this, check on this. I'm going to blow you away. If I click on this three, this window pops up over here. And I'm just going to zoom in on this. It will show you the check. And then I'll go to the next one. Uh, well, that turns it around. Um, next image. And here's the next check. And then the next image, that's actually the deposit ticket. All right. So now I know which three things made it up. I think I'm going to zoom in on this. And so it looks like this one is Vicky and Midland. Okay. So it knows exactly, I know exactly what it is. Um, I think that's amazing. So it's the same thing with this one down here. I'll click on this and I will click. That's not what I wanted to do. I meant to click on the three. There we go. Okay. So I'll move this up and I'll make this big. So this is Downs and Paradise. Okay. So now if you are the person who enters sales receipt, yes, it's specific to the bank, Melanie. If you were the person, not all banks attach the copy of the check, but some do. Um, if you are entering sales receipts for each one of your individual items and you're depositing it to undeposited funds, this usually says undeposited funds, look what I can do here, okay? I can match more than one. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go to 16050. I'm going to click it to open it. I thought I did. There we go. I already had it open. And I'm going to click match. See, if there's more than one, it's not going to automatically match it. You have to match it yourself to multiple items. And that happens with deposits. So I'm going to click on match. It gives me a list of all the sales receipts, all the payments against invoices that have been recorded. And I can find, based on what I knew from, from the looking at the checks, it was these two, okay, that made it up. Okay, so the downloaded transactions were 16050. And what I selected here was 16050. It's a match. So I'll click match. And now we're down to one transaction. Now, I saved this last one because some people, which I think is really a bad idea, by the way, what I'm about to say, some people don't even enter their deposits ahead of time. They just catch those from the download. I think that's real stupid because if you make a deposit and it never clears, it'll never be in QuickBooks because you didn't enter it. So I want you to enter it manually. But nevertheless... You can go in here and you can enter it manually at it, just like you do the debits and the credits, the credit card charges. And if it needs to be split, you can push this split button and you can split it. You can say, oh, okay, well, this was from Delphine Adams and um, she gave an individual contribution. I really don't think you should be entering like this though, but I just, for the person who wants to, I'm letting you 16,000 and then we'll say the next one was this help for you. And this was a foundation grant and it was for the fundraising class and it is 1,405. And so now we're at zero. Okay. So, um, and then I'm going to click apply and accept. All right. So when you're done, uh, this thing will be back at zero. Everything has been reconciled. We're good to go. Okay. So uh, that is how to handle um, entering the transactions from the bank. Now, we only have like eight minutes left. Um, Florine joined late. Yes, you'll have a copy. Um, Darthula, do you recommend that we have checks? My banker cannot give me guidance. I have paid all my invoices using Zelle. Yeah, I don't like checks. I don't really use them. Is the attachment a specific? Oh, I already did that. Okay, cool. So um, I want to take you to my website here.
because I want to, and why don't you come on the line uh, page? Because sometimes you can think of things that I haven't thought of that I need to tell them. Um, so Paige, if you want to mute yourself, I'm going to let you talk in a second here. But if you like the way I teach and you feel like you can learn and you are still learning about QuickBooks, if you go to QuickBooks Made Easy, go to live webinars, sign up for our three-day, two and a half hours a day webinar series. It's happening next month, November 12th, 13th, and 14th for people using desktop, November uh, 19th, 20th, and 21st for people using online. It's from 2 to 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. We'll take breaks. We'll listen to music. It'll be fun. When you sign up for this thing, when you click on it, you'll get to see all of the stuff that we cover in day one, day two, and day three. OK, so it's everything you can ever imagine. Tracking research grants, special fundraising events, doing your thank you letters, in-kind contributions. That's just on day three. There's all kinds of stuff that we go over. All right. So uh, the codes, um, let me give you the little code to get. It's $2.99 normally. But I think I put the codes here at the beginning now that I think about it. Yeah, there it is. The code is TS40OFF. TS40OFF. TechSoup 40 OFF. It's only good until Saturday night. Sign up for this. You'll get $40 off. It's amazing. You'll have fun. If you don't like going to webinars and you just want to talk to me, okay? If you go to QuickBooks Made Easy and you sign up for tech support, go to tech support up here, sign up for a year, put either desktop or online. A year is $4.99. Now, when you sign up for it, we're going to give you $200 off. So it'll only be $298 for you. And then you can email us with questions. You can down, you can uh, call us with questions. You can even ask for an appointment. There's only four of us that will be answering. It's Paige, question, that is her name, question, Barbara, and myself. Okay? And you can request me or Paige directly if you want. Um, and Paige, is there anything in particular that I'm forgetting to teach them? Let me give them the code for this first, though. Where's the code for the... There it is. TS Tech 299. TS Tech 299. And I'll give you $200 off. Again, it's good until Saturday night. Okay. Paige, any thoughts? <laughs> um, you can breathe. Sit back. Take a drink. Yes. Okay. We'll relax. Um, I don't act. There are no questions today. So you did a fantastic job teaching, I believe, because no one had any questions. And nothing that was not covered in the chat, uh, I think you got it all today. But we, we did get a little shout out from Melanie. Thanks, Melanie. So I'm going to push you, Paige, and put you on the spot. Because I know you deal with <laughs> bank feeds all the time. There's got to be something sure. you like about them or don't like about them. Is there anything you want to say? I'm pushing my it. big. That's okay. That's okay. Nothing like a little pressure. Um, my biggest takeaway with bank feeds is it, it's no different than anything else with technology. I'll just remind you know it's it's intelligent software, but it's still just software. It's it's up to us behind the screen to still run the show. Um, and I'm very much like like Greg in that I don't like for it to uh, you know, automatically add kind of behind my back. Um, I'd rather still kind of be in control because it's, you know, under my watch. So those, yeah. are, those are my two big takeaways about bank feeds. What do you do with Amazon? How do you deal with Amazon, that? Oh, so fun. <laughs> um, so fun. Amazon is the bane of all of our existences. Right. Booking, what do you all right? think about User Amazon, guys? <laughs> what do you do, though? Going, oh, great. Do you try well, to point uh, them where they're supposed to go, or do you just stick it to supplies so, and call it a day? No, so there's two main things that I'll do, and of course, you you know, we all should know our once we learn our client a little bit better. But I'll do one of two things: either one, I'll really try to talk the client into using the Amazon Business Connect so that it will help pull more directly. If that's not an option for them, that's it's probably fine. But I don't get hung up on categorizing Amazon. A lot of times I'll create a ask my client Amazon, you know, account and tell them it's starting to pile up and they need to help me categorize it. Make an expense account called Amazon. And then right. uh, ask my, make an expense call to ask my clients and then point all the Amazon to that and then make them if they use it a lot. But what is this Amazon business? Is that an app that you can use to link? Yes. What do I type? Amazon business? 
Uh, it's or is this not where a, you do yeah. it? Yep, Here. yep, you're right there. Look. But you yep. have to pay for this thing? It's Well, Amazon Business is something the user will do on their own side. So instead of just like you or me or, you know, Aretha or Bill just buying Amazon for our personal selves, if you set up for an Amazon Business account, mm -hmm. um, it actually tracks the categories of spending much easier on the Amazon side so that it will pull into QuickBooks a lot you know, more intuitively than just throwing okay. it all nowhere. So that means instead of just pulling an Amazon payment, it pulls in every single charge. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody wanted to know, can you do rules for bank? And yeah, you absolutely can. When you click on rules, these rules apply for all the accounts, unless you tell it not to. See, when I click new rule, all bank accounts, see, you can pick and choose what it applies to. So yeah, you can do rules for the bank accounts as well. Um, Cindy wanted to know when the best time to switch from desktop to online is. I would say as soon as possible. Um, if you get audited, then I would wait till the end of the year, um, and then, uh, do it the first of the next year, but you need to hurry up. And that reminds me, um, if you go to QuickBooks made easy and you click on nonprofit consulting, we will actually move you from QuickBooks desktop to QuickBooks online, um, directly it's called QuickBooks migration. The other thing is if you are paying a monthly fee for your QuickBooks, does anybody pay a monthly fee for your QuickBooks? Put it in the chat. Does anybody pay um, a monthly fee? So Neil does, Pat does. If you're paying a monthly fee, Deb does, you're wasting your money. You're going to be paying after the discount goes away at least $100 or $200 a month. You can get from TechSoup, you can get QuickBooks online, and then we will migrate you from your monthly QBO subscription to the one TechSoup is offering. It's the same data. It's the same program. You'll only be paying, though, let me just put this on here. You'll only be paying $170 a year rather than a month, okay? So, um, and I would get this one right here. It's only $170 right there a year, okay? Um, so it's wonderful savings. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anybody else that has anything that I did not answer. Ah, last question. Uh, let me see. Um, is that where it is? Oh, hold on a second. Somebody wanted to know, uh, what my real background, what my real office looked like. Here's my real office. <laughs> All right, Aretha, take us away. That was so good. I'm definitely going to have to watch this again. I have not updated my QuickBooks in months. Yikes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I'm with a lot of these other people. So you're uh, really going to sit and watch it again? I am because- Just lying. You, you Just know, lying. I, promise, I promise when you did the reconciliation, <laughs> I was like, oh, I could have done that. I learned so much. I promise you, I'm lying. You, oh- <laughs> just bald face lying no 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 i'm serious but Paige, um there was a question in there Paige. i'm not sure julia's question what that was it hey gotcha go aretha thanks she had just asked about uh desktop version bank feeds and i and that was all the information we had so i did ask if she wanted you to talk about that greg but i'm not sure that we you would have well we're out of time but if that person has a tech support agreement with me then I'll walk through it. But yeah, you can you can do it. It's it's a whole nother process though, and it's usually costs money. You really need to move to online. But if you have tech support, I'll be glad to show it to you. What is the best place? What is what is the best to replace Premier Nonprofit Edition 2021? Go to QBO Advanced. Go to QBO Advanced. Period. All right, Aretha, 